Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Inside Fanatics Brush. I am your host Matsko to review week 3 of the LEC that featured one big rivalry Fnatic vs G2. This weekend was very special for me as I was very lucky to be inside the studio for both games on Saturday and Sunday. I was planning to see the team live for quite some time and if there was one game to see obviously it had to be the classical. On top of that, Fnatic continued to play their undefeated streak and I had to see this in person. Now, their first game against Mad Lions wasn't really the one I was most worried about. Mad Lions are very far from looking like the best team, having a score of 1-4 so far. And as mentioned in my previous video, I feel like they've completely lost their identity. When it comes to the draft in particular, Fnatic draft everything they're comfortable with. Xin Zhao for Razork, Noah on Zeri, and Oscar Nin who has a very good Olaf. On top of that, Fnatic managed to get an amazing early game with Noah getting a first blood and Razork coming in bot to get a second one. Fnatic also had a great advantage in controlling the neutral objectives, not only capturing 5 void grubs but also having 2 to 1 advantage in the drakes. Fnatic continuing their trend of good fight selections manages to catch Mad Lions multiple times in their corner of the jungle just next to the river. This is truly what made the difference throughout the game. On top of good map management, good objective control, Fnatic fold the game very easily in 31 minutes with one final team fight that closes the game. Not much here to say again, Fnatic just playing their style. One thing I did note though was June on the Leona didn't feel that comfortable getting caught here and there, but overall good plays from him and a great victory from the team. Moving on to our big game of the week, G2 versus Fnatic for the streak. For the 100th game of the rivalry in the LEC, everything to play for. Fnatic goes straight into a very Fnatic-like draft, drafting tons of engages like the Vi, the Zac, and the Leona. Adding with that a good scaling option with the Ezreal and Talia to round up the composition. However, it is very clear that G2 has worked on countering Fnatic style with a very anti-engage composition, the Renata, the Camille, and the Corky. And as expected, this game gave us an insane continuous brawl. Kills, 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 and kills every minute of the game. From the get-go, starting with the dive on the bot lane against Noah and June, that somehow ended up with Noah securing three kills. But in return, Fnatic also decided to fumble a bot dive, giving away kills to Hansama as well. The continuous back and forth still favors Fnatic, who's playing the map a little bit better. However, comes to a point where Camille hits her items and the anti-engage just clicks on together during the team fights. It becomes very difficult for Fnatic to get close to any member from G2. Renata R's, Camille R, Sejuani Ultimate, Ash to stun and engage from its distance. The G2 composition just clicks in and puts Fnatic in a terrible situation. It doesn't help that Fnatic is also going in when they shouldn't and committing small mistakes like Razork not smiting the Herald and forcing a team fight, or also getting caught around River when Oscardin, who's had a great laning phase so far, is on the other side of the map. As the game goes forward, unfortunately, G2 keeps winning the team fights, other composition just answers perfectly Fnatic's aggression. A bunch of final mistakes from Fnatic, like Razork getting caught while recalling, June trying to save him, and also getting killed in the process, completely ends the game for Fnatic, as well as their undefeated streak. I'm not gonna lie, it was disappointing to see the team lose, especially live in the studio, as I was really expecting them to continue the streak and have the opportunity to finally see Fnatic beat G2 when I'm in the arena. Also losing the 100th game of the rivalry just adds to the heart of the ego. Nonetheless, let's not forget that this is just a best of one. G2 drafted well into Fnatic, executed well, and also the team did a couple of mistakes that cost them the game. Would Fnatic have won if it was a best of three? Maybe. We'll never know in this best of one format, and this is how the game is played, and this is how we'll have to accept it today. 
In the end, I think it's a great game for Fnatic to go back to the drawing board, see finally how teams can counter their style and find answers to it. If any of you last week had the opportunity to listen to Nightshare on last week's episode of Euphoria, you will have heard some great insight about the team on their process, their improvement, how they've adapted their training following MSI. There's a lot to say, so I'll just encourage you to watch the video and see it for yourself. Despite the loss, I think one player who did amazingly well this game, but also in the split so far is Oskarnen. Accused last split and also during MSI to be a bit of a Cassanti merchant, we've seen him this time be not only more dominant in lane, but also have more convincing games on the weak side matchups. The solo kill with Orn against Renekton for instance, or even his great Zack game against G2 where he completely pushes in Broken Blade into his turret, have helped the team be much better as a cohesion overall. He's definitely holding his own much more as of this split, isn't afraid to play both tanks, but also more carry bruiser champions. A big question coming into this split was whether or not Oskarnen was able to play the weak side without completely losing his lane. And seeing his game recently, not only is he not completely losing his lane, but in some cases he's actually winning, which really shouldn't be happening considering some of the matchups he's played. In my opinion, this probably reflects the increase of trust inside of the team and also the, the fact that scrims are, from what we've heard, going much better. I'm a firm believer that Oskarnin can be one of the best top laners, if not the best top laner in the LEC. He's also challenged some of the greatest top laners from Asian teams, so the path is clear for him. If he continues being this consistent and improving with each game passing by, I have no doubt that he will reach that objective. This weekend will mark the end of the regular split and the final two games for Fnatic before heading into playoffs. Saturday will start versus Team Heretics, who's not been looking great as of recent, specifically last weekend, losing a game against probably one of the worst teams of the split, Rogue. In the eternal words of Skara, Up until they lose the game, they're winning. So, <laughs> And this seems to be the trend for Team Heretics, this entire split where numerous times they should have won game but completely threw it, whether it be bad team fights or poor map control. I expect Fnatic to win this pretty cleanly and maybe try some different picks as they should have more space to win against Team Heretics that is still struggling to find a good style this split. The bigger challenge for me will be against BDS. In most of their games, they've looked rather dominant and clean. If they're able to put a hyper carry onto ice like Jinx or Theory, it becomes very scary to face them. Adam has also allowed himself to play champions that are outside of his God's champ picks and been quite efficient on them as well. There have been games, however, where they've slipped, slowed down their pace and put themselves in dangerous moments, specifically against KC recently, but still managed to close the game nonetheless. As the ultimate game of the regular split, I think it's a great test to really see where Fnatic fits onto the final standings. The top of the table being very tight, one loss can be the difference between being first or going more towards the fourth and fifth place. Locking the end of the week at first for Fnatic would give them the privilege of choosing the team they will face going into the playoffs. Hopefully the loss against G2 has not completely demoralized the boys and we will see them back in form in the last two games of the regular split. But what about you? What do you think about last week's games, especially the one against G2? Are you one of the doom and glooms or are you just not worried for the rest of the split? Let me know your opinions in the comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to be alerted of all the next videos coming in during the playoffs. Before I finish the video, I want to give a quick shout out to the person who recognized me in the audience. Thank you very much for coming and have a quick conversation with me. It really means a lot to see people who enjoy the content. I hope I get to meet as many of you in future events and hear about your feedback. Thanks again for tuning in today and don't forget, always fanatic.